Hi everyone, so recently I've been playing around on Hardcore with my wizard and one of the builds that I really enjoyed and feel like I've been playing to a great effect is the support wizard. So I want to highlight this here and I had a lot of fun with this and support wizard is usually not really part of the meta. It's simply not as good as the other supports in like a fully optimized environment, especially towards the higher tiers. It's it's just outclassed by support barbarian, which is basically always going to be included in every party composition forever. And we have the CDH, we have the Z Monk, uh, either for the more offensive buffs or for the more defensive buffs. So typically, there's just a little need for the support wizard. But there is one, and that is especially speed runs and especially playing a single support. So the unique mechanic about this is that you can remove elite affixes and you can remove projectiles with the black hole event horizon rune. So this one has the effect that you can just suck everything in, including wallers, you can just suck in orbiters, plagued ground effects, molten explosions, all this kind of stuff. And especially on hardcore, this makes everything super smooth, super safe, and you don't really bring these huge defensive buffs. You pretty much have none of those, but you have this. And this is so much more valuable depending on the party composition. Imagine a gold demon hunter that uh, just gets walled off from the yellow and you have to wait like eight seconds or so until the walls break down and then you can't kill it off before the next wall spawn. Yeah, you can spend a lot of time on just one elite pack that you would otherwise kill in like three seconds. So you just black hole it, all the walls are gone, easy. So there's a lot of situations like this that can really help you out. And the second unique mechanic is that huge pixel stack that we have with the twister pull. So we have Ransler's Folly and uh, this can also be used to great advantage when you're doing really fast runs, let's say like one to two minute runs. You usually don't really have much time to make pulls. You just run and the pull has to be made in a second maximum. And you can do exactly this with the twister because it has a 30 yard range which is huge. It's like half the screen in, in the radius. So you can pull enemies from all sides into like one little pixel and it just gets obliterated with air damage and depending on the builds you're playing with, Bone Spear can just like do like one Bone Spear attack. God Demon Hunter just, you know, the arrow pierces 20 times. So in insane damage buffs they can give like this. Even though it's not like a real damage buff, it just has so much value because of the air damage. There are some smaller buffs as well in the setup and you can decide to take a bit more or a bit less but these are the two highlights here and this is really what you need to focus on for these runs. Obviously there's always some variations possible of any kind of support setup including this one. I have three variations to show here and I can jump into them right now. So we have the DMO4 preset. This is the slow time set and uh, we use this especially for the cooldown reduction and for the damage reduction so it's more like a personal buff you also give 30 percent damage reduction to your allies that are inside the slow time slow time has the other effect you can get 15 percent additive damage and if you use the crown of the primus you actually get all runes so sometimes you might not want to use this for example i play with god dh sometimes and uh, the scott dh has a bow equipped so you have to be quite careful with the attack speed breakpoints and there is one attack speed rune on slow time, which I, uh, I I don't use in that case. So I actually run it for Loris Crown in that case. But typically you want all runes. There's like a lot of helpful stuff like damage reduction, the attack speed, the damage bonus. So pretty good skill overall in most cases at least. And it also has like a stun effect that you can sometimes use for, for example, blocking Crispin. So you can set up a slow time and then pull stuff in with the twister and everything will be stunned. So we have like Perma Crispin doing a nuke or something. So pretty neat. The other uh, big buff here is the Frost Nova Bone Chill. Thing is, this has a very small range and only two seconds duration. So you want to stack a lot of cooldown. Best case within Geom, you can just spam it. I typically mostly use this on Elites and on the Rift Guardian and don't really bother with this during a run, at least in the fast runs. Like when you do like a two minute run, all you really focus on is the Twister and the Black Hole and teleporting around and maybe a slow time here and there. And here's the twister. We use Mr. Breeze. So the advantage here is that you apply a slow immediately for Bane of the Trapped for your for your DPS players. It applies the Ice Blink easily. It applies the Cold Blooded Passive that is another 10% additive damage boost. So pretty neat and uh, it also costs less resources. And here's the, the Black Hole Event Horizon that I mentioned. So I use this basically always on Elites. 
And the thing is that the twister pull with the Ransos Folly doesn't actually pull in elite enemies or minions. So it only works on non-elites. So you have to use the black hole in conjunction after the twister. So typically you do the twister first to get all the trash close to the elite or on top of the elite. And then you use the black hole to keep everything kind of like trapped there and your DPS can just blast them down. Finally, we have the storm armor with scramble here for the extra move speed and extra defense. I have the halo of Karini here. Later on, you might not really need all this toughness, but for the start, I would definitely suggest this. So there is another version here, for example, with uh, Obsidian Ring. So we just swap the Halo of Karini to Obsidian and we swap the Storm Armor to Energy Armor, Force Armor. So this is a bit dam less damage reduction, but you get the Obsidian Ring. So it's, for example, easier to keep up your um, Perma Frost Nova spam, which without in Geom you otherwise couldn't do. I think I have like three seconds cooldown with two seconds duration or so without in Geom. Typically I have a Geom anyway, so it's not a big deal, but especially when you go a bit higher or a bit slower, then this can help you a lot here to just spam Frost Nova a lot more. And finally we have the Teleport here with Wormhole. So there is also some variations here, for example there is uh, an offhand Cosmic Strand that gives you the Wormhole rune. So you could use the Safe Passage here, which gives you 25% damage reduction. Just in general, as I mentioned, you can play around with some of these things here. The two most important things are Ransler's Twister Pull and the Black Hole here with the Event Horizon. I also have a high GR variation here. You can squeeze in a few more buffs, uh, especially the Conflagration passive here, giving you 6% extra crit chance to all your party members when you hit with a fire spell. And I feel the best way to do this is to do Explosive Blast, replace your armor skill completely, and then have, to have the Orb of Infinite Depth. So when you go high GRs, you're going to be running a bit more slowly and you're going to have actual time to get up the Explosive Blast uh, buff and uh, get up the Conflagration buff like this, kind of like stand close to the enemies. You're going to be super tanky with this. It's 80% damage reduction. So this is, you know, basically Karini alone. And uh, if you need even more damage reduction, you could probably try that anyway with, you know, maybe adding in Karini again or maybe adding in something else to just help you out there as well. But you shouldn't need it because it's just going to be so tanky with the slow time up with this up. I also added the Executioner here. So typically the other setups have an Angeum and Adder Walker. So this is a bit overkill. You can probably go without Adder Walker. This is definitely something that I would like to try as well. So I'll just go with Angeum because that gives you the Perma Teleport anyway. And I have really high cooldown values. So when you roll it everywhere and you have Captain Crimson, you have like two and a half seconds teleport cooldown or so, which typically can be fine. And this is only so long cooldown when you don't have a geom, which doesn't even happen very often. So there's only going to be like some small downtimes where you're a little bit slower. And what you could do is then take Echoing Fury and basically have a much easier time making the twister pulls and applying a slow time. So typically I just do twister, move on, twister, teleport, twister, teleport. But like with the, with the Echoing Fury, you're going to have the chance to do Twister, Slow Time, Teleport, Twister, Slow Time, Teleport, kind of like this, to like add a few more of those buffs. So you actually yeah, help out the DPS a bit more. In the end, it always depends a little bit on the situation, on the map, on the monster type, on the tier. So you kind of need to judge how fast you need to go. Basically, you always want to be a little bit ahead of the rest of the party so you can do the big twister pull and then maybe the black hole and maybe the slow time and then move on and especially in those big open maps you want to do like multiple twisters everywhere basically you always want to pull stuff together just have like these little clumps of enemies everywhere and your dps can just you know run past them and, and kill them in like a second or so so this is the idea here and you don't really want to go like too slow or maybe do a twister too early so you don't really want to run too far ahead because the twister pull only really lasts or stays like this for maybe one two maybe three seconds or so so basically you need to time it right before your DPS arrives and can blast all the enemies. Anyway, go check out the D3 panel in the description. If you like the setup, if you want to play it, I can just recommend trying it out, especially for something like more off meta or if you just want to have some fun or especially if you're playing hardcore. So there's always some possibility to play around with these kind of things. And having at least one support player in the group, it doesn't even matter much which class it is because any support can boost the DPS of all other people by quite a lot, that it's basically always worth to have at least one support. So if you feel like doing a wizard, just go for it. Uh, it's very fun. Definitely some of the most fun I've had recently in Diablo 3. And well, hope this had helped you with that. 
So, hope you liked this video. I'll see you guys next time.